Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Good morning, Deacon Randy. <laughs> hey, Mark. Yes, yes, I know. You never know who's, who you're going to talk to on this end of the uh, oh. microphone. And, and uh, so th- thanks for bearing with us this morning. How are you? So good. I'm so good. I tell you, but I will say I barely slept. Do you know why? But t- no, I, but you will tell us, I'm sure. The excitement of talking about Joshua today. Yes. <laughs> That's where I've got to go. I um, Years ago, uh, as a wedding gift, Cheryl and I were given a plaque that said, a wooden grave plaque. The, the friend of mine made it. He etched it out of a wood-burning kit, and it said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. And we hung that on the front of wherever we dwelled for 26 years till it split in half. <sighs> And it was no longer able to be hung in front of our house. But that was always on the outside of our house. And um, that was one of the themes for our home. And so I wanted to talk about this portion of Scripture because Joshua twenty four fifteen. that's a very popular verse. Mm-hmm. Um, a little bit of a kitschy verse. We could find it on doilies. We could find it quilted. We could find it on placards. We could find it at gift shops. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But I want to build context around it because the context is even more powerful than the, than the goodness of even what the verse says to us naturally. So Joshua, close to the end of his life, is in the Valley of Shechem. And Shechem has been between Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. In between there, there is a natural amphitheater that's just... Standing in the middle of it, your voice was able to be able to be heard throughout the whole valley. And this is where the the speech is about to come out. And Joshua was was such a decisive preacher. If we looked at him as a homilist, we'd say he called for action. He called for decision. He didn't speak in concepts and ideas to consider. He called for action. So in this, his, his last proclamation, his last sermon will say his last homily before his death they had already thought that the last one was the last one but hold on folks they got one more for you <laughs> but wait there's more <laughs> <laughs> there's more and he calls them before he said listen you your fathers on the other side of the river which he actually meant three bodies of river the jordan euphrates and the dead sea the different gods that were over there on the different styles it's a unique study but i'll set that aside they all had different gods. Which god are you going to serve? Because there had been, there had been like you know, time, and they were in the promised land, and they were already settled there for a while, but it was already kind of getting, getting old, losing some of their fire. And so who are you going to be? Are you going to resort backwards? Are you going to go back to the god of your culture? Are you going to go back to the god of your tradition? Or are you going to come forward with me and serve this god? And then he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Hebrew verb tense that was used here for will serve the Lord, it actually meant, Mark, I have served the Lord, I will serve the Lord, and I am forever going to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's the same verb tense that was then translated over to Greek that said Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So this is the statement of our faith. And then they responded in robust. They didn't even take time to consider. They said, yes, we will serve the Lord. Our families will serve the Lord. We will follow. But also because he was followed in the promptings of what we know would be the Holy Spirit that called them to decision-making. We carry that also out in our acts of baptism and in every sacrament that we walk forward in. Those are proclamations that say, we We, the people of who we are, the people of our home, we will serve the Lord. I have served the Lord, we will serve the Lord, and forever I will serve the Lord. And that, you know, when I was studying that, I thought, oh, find that plaque and rebuild that and get that back on the front of my house. Yes. Oh, that's, so that's, that, that's our first. That's our first reading for this Sunday, that, and that, that's just the first reading, right? That's <laughs> the first reading. You know, I didn't even get into Ephesians of how it brings a didactic, 
uh, information into now that you will serve the Lord, here are ways in which you should serve the Lord. Paul, Paul gets very clear. In your families, here's how you serve one another. Here's how you love one another. Here's how you guide one another. Here's how you lead one another further toward our Savior for the sake of the salvation of the Church of Jesus Christ. Mm. And that just uh, that just reinforces again that element of our faith where we yes we faith is a gift it, it, and we have to uh, we have to claim that faith and then and then we have to respond to it right with where yeah. we uh, uh, work out our salvation with fear and trembling and here are the ways that we can do that uh, and so that we can continue as you said uh, to to serve him yesterday today and forever right. Absolutely. And, and in Ephesians, the second, the second reading, one thing I would point out, if I have, since I can have six more seconds, he says, as the church is subordinate to Jesus Christ, so also here's the order, order of subordination. In, order, here's, in other words, here's the order of how to serve one another. The church is subordinate to Jesus Christ. The point I want to make with that is that sometimes, Mark, um, our essence gets carried away as though we are worshiping our church. We are not worshiping our church. Right. We are worshiping our Christ, our Savior, as our church. She, our leader, is subordinate to Christ. Mm. Great stuff. Wow. Wow. I, I, that's, Isn't it a good morning? It is a good morning. And uh, <laughs> I would even go so far as to say it's great. Uh, Deacon, close us with a prayer as, as we prepare our hearts for this weekend. Oh, thank you for the good morning, God. May this be a morning, regardless of circumstances, regardless of events, regardless of struggle, strife, and difficulties. We know that it is a good morning because it is of you, because it is of you, God. We welcome that goodness into our life. I pray for that assistance to flow up for the goodness of others. Do your Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Have a blessed weekend, and we'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Today, tomorrow, and always. (laughs) My friend, thank you so much. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.